Kia ora everybody, welcome back to Creative Curiosity. I'm your host, my name is Tehunu Tuna. Um, today is episode four of Square Eyes, and um, I've got my brother Tairu on here, aka Moldy Boy Gaming on Instagram. Um, we're here to talk about some games, um, really just to talk about the stuff that we like talking about. So, Tairu, a brother, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, bro. Thank you for having me on. Um, surviving this quarantine, we're nearly out of it. Oh, Thankfully, <laughs> yeah, nah, but yeah, we're doing good. We're doing good. How are you? Ah, oh, I'm really good, brother, and that's good to hear too. Um, I think a lot of a lot of us who are into like the entertainment industry, whether it be gaming or movies, you know, we wish that some of these big titles came out just before lockdown. We would have been even sweeter. Eh? <laughs> oh, bro, yeah, like it was massively disappointing when um. Last of Us Part Two got delayed. I was like, "Oh no!" Like that would have been perfect. Like again, bro. Yeah. Oh, but you know, it's it's all good. We're only a couple of weeks away now, so yeah, it's yeah, it'll be good to get it once it comes out. Oh, bro, hard out. And um, for those of you listening, um, the game we just touched on there, we'll probably end up talking about it a little bit later on. Uh, it's the Last of Us Part Two. The original game came out in 2013, and it was a masterpiece in every sense of the word. Um. It was probably the first game I ever played and I said to myself, this was actually like a movie. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll talk about that later. But our first topic is um, God of War. Oh. Um, bro, so I, I had this in my mind for a cool place to start. Let's go back to 2016 E3 when you saw the reveal trailer of God of War. Bro. Where were you? What were you <laughs> thinking? Were you expecting it? How did you feel? How did you react? Bro, so it's actually a funny, funny story. <laughs> um, <laughs> back in 2016, when E3 was still on, so every E3, for starters, I'd always watch, like just yeah. you know, find a stream and watch it. Uh, this E3 in particular, I was in my first proper year in Mahi, um, coming out of university. <laughs> and me, me and the bro who I used to work with, Steve, uh, we, we were at Mahi and I was like, oh, are we going to watch E3 or are we going to be doing some Mahi today? And... He's like, nah, 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 we'll just, we'll have a tab up and we'll watch it on the side. We'll watch it on the side and we'll do my head at the same time. Anyway, we ended up just watching it, both of us. And <laughs> I remember that particular E3, um, there were the rumors that, you know, God of War was going to come back and it was going to be, yeah. it was going to be completely different. And I was like, oh, like, like we, we hadn't played, you know, God of War hadn't come out in a long time. And yeah. when, when they were teasing it, it was like, oh, okay, is this going to be the one? Is this going to be the E3? And then the, the trailer just set it up in such a way that, you know, you see uh, Atreus, but you see the kid playing with his toys and you're like, yeah. oh, what's going on here? Yeah. And then you hear in the background, like someone calling out to him and then you're like, oh, what's going on? You, can't, you don't see him fully yet. And then Kratos just emerging from the, the, the shadows. Like, oh. <laughs> oh, man. I'm goosebumps thinking about it now. Bro, like, I'm getting teary eyes. <laughs> I remember, I remember sitting there, and it was so funny because the bro uh, that we were watching, I was watching the stream with. He had it on his own computer, and I had it on mine, and he yep. had a delayed stream. Oh! Because <laughs> and, and we both had headphones on. And I was like, oh! And then he like turns to me and he goes, Kratos, Kratos, and I was like, oh! No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were cracking oh, up! It was so funny. And then like everyone in the office, was like, hey, what, what, what's going on? And I was like, oh, no, no, nothing, nothing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They wouldn't get it. Yeah, we're just oh, we're just playing it off, eh? But oh, yeah, I remember. And then, and then the greatest thing about that was like you got to see an extended part of the gameplay. Or immediately, that yeah. never happens, eh? No, nah, never. It's just usually like it'll just be a teaser. Like yeah, you know, usually expect it, expect it to be cut off right when they show Kratos. But yeah, nah, you got to see him roll around, and then next minute he's got his bloody axe, and it's like oh, where where are the blades? And yeah, 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 like, yeah. Now nah, he smokes up with the axe, and it's like, oh, this is oh. <laughs> Oh, chef's kiss, like, like yeah, oh. bro, like eleven out of ten, twelve out of ten, eh, bro? Yeah, oh, unreal, unreal, bro. I remember when I watched it. Um, where was twenty sixteen? I was in living in Palmy at the time, and because I was, I'm the same as you, bro. Like, I've said plenty of times, like my favorite events throughout the year. There's two events that I love sort of staying up to date with there used to be three the apple event like when the new iphone will be announced was one of them but um i haven't really i'm not really like that hard out into it like i used to be um but 
E3 is one and Mr. Olympia is another one. Yeah. And um, yeah, I remember I would like wake up early just to, to jump like on live if I can. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, bro, like you said, like, you know, shows of trash playing with those toys. And I think what the cool thing about it, um, you know, because the voice has changed to Christopher Judge now, when he started speaking, no one expected it would be Kratos because his voice is different, eh? Mm. You know, and um, when it's spray, I was like literally, oh, like I was in disbelief for like a good 30 seconds. I thought it was someone else. I was like, why would they make someone else like, you know, as Kratos or, you know, as the God of War? And it wasn't until like, yeah, like 30 seconds into it, I was like, oh shit, it's actually him. <laughs> I don't know why, but um, yeah, I think it was just, one of those too good to be true sort of moments. And, you know, even with the gameplay, I remember buzzing out how the camera was set behind him, mm. you know, because anyone who's played the original God of War titles, they had sort of like set placements for each camera. It would, you know, never just followed directly behind you. And um, like around that time, that was when like beards starting started to be cool. So. <laughs> Yeah. He looked even meaner. You know, yeah. he really looked cool before, you know, in the yeah. original God of Wars and somehow they made him look meaner, you know, older, grittier, you know, real droney voice. Mm. Um so from that one, bro, like fast forwarding to the release of God of War. Oh no, actually, what was your reaction, bro, when he um when he called back his the Leviathan X like oh. Mjolnir? <laughs> When I when I saw that happen, I was like, no way. Like it was just a game changer. Like, because for so long you'd always see him with the Blades of Chaos. And like when those were first introduced, you're like, oh, these are like it's like a whip. Yeah. Like you're throwing out these swords that are, you know, and it, it really suited the character at the time because he was just like a ruthless Spartan, angry all the time, and just it was pure violence, you know. He was just always just like effing up everyone. Whereas this was just like you could tell, yeah, like you were saying, he's like a more mature, like cool, calm, collected, and while well, still like hissing and violent. Yeah. You could tell like this was more calculated and like he knew what he was doing. And then when he called the axe back, I was like, oh, hell. <laughs> this, oh, yeah, so good. It was so good to see. Yeah. Yeah, they did it. And um, just the way they did it, you know, it was somehow, bro, they've, for me anyway, personally, they've made it feel and look cooler than Mjolnir getting called back you know that you know it's got that like weight to it and even in specifically in that gameplay um how when you look at the axe because they you know they made it a little bit more cinematic where it kind of had a little jerk in the axe like it was like a hesitation to come back to him yep. whereas when you play the game you know it comes back like straight away there's no like little half a delay and I think you know they put that in there just to build that bit of suspense because I don't you know I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting him to go walk over and grab his axe. Yeah, yeah. So so was I. Like I, I almost thought like, oh well, he's just throwing it away, and then you obviously get to use his fists. Yeah. Like, ooh, like you're gonna have to go over and pick it up every time if you throw it, but not get the old hands out, and then it just comes <laughs> back like what? <laughs> oh. And then you know when you, oh yeah. So we'll go fast forward to release. Um. Did you pre-download it? Did you go to the store to buy it? How how was all of that sort of time for you? Uh, so for me, I usually go on because I like to just buy the case and the just have the disc. Same here, bro. Been, Same I've here. I've always been old school like that. I don't know, like, but because of um what's happened with COVID, like, so my favorite game of all time, Final Fantasy VII, they just had the remake come out, and I was really looking forward to getting the like the deluxe edition because it's going to come with an art book. Yeah. I've already been given shit from my mates about it because they're like, what do you want an art book for? I'm like, this is my favorite game of all Why time. Why not? Like, yeah, I want to see, like, you know, the the artists that have made this game, like, you know, their sketches and mm. all these characters in there. Well, anyway, um, so because of COVID, obviously the physical copies didn't, you know, come into New Zealand on time. And so I had to pre um, or download that digitally. I was a little bit disappointed, but now I can see, like, the whole hype behind like why you would do that you know you don't have to go into a store get a disc in that mm. but yeah well anyway yeah so i went in god of war got got the disc i remember finish uh knocking off work um just jumping straight into it and <laughs> oh it, it was such a 
such an amazing experience from start to end and like because there's so many nuances that you don't really notice with the game bro so many but like the one the one main thing for me was that if like you were to go through the game from start to finish like there's no like there's no like stopping cutscenes. there's nothing Mm. that stops it there's no break in between it's like just one like from start to end a movie yeah and it's just such a cinematic experience and like (laughs) No, no game. I think, well, for me anyway, prior to that, had done anything like that. Yeah, and it was just, yeah, it was a, a game changer, a literal game changer. And wow, what a, yeah, what a game, what a game. <laughs> Where did you buy from, bro? Uh, I think I would got it from EB Games. Oh yeah, yeah. It's been, been a while. Yeah, just yeah, just the standard EB Games. Yeah, yeah. bro. I remember when I got it. Um, because I pre-ordered it from the warehouse here in Fakatani. We didn't have any like EB games or anything over here. <clears throat> and what's cool about the warehouse is it's always like ten dollars cheaper or like twenty dollars cheaper than everywhere else. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I bought it for ninety bucks, bro. <clears throat> Brand new. And um I remember on that day, um, what did I do? I had I had a meeting at the library in town. It was for like um <clears throat> an event for Matariki that was coming up. And that was the only day the meeting could happen. I remember just being gutted. I was like, I've been waiting this for, <laughs> waiting for this since 2016. And you fellas want to all of a sudden have the meeting on the day that this game comes up. <laughs> <clears throat> and then I remember just saying, ah, stuff it. Yeah, I'll just do it. And then I, cause I'm, I vlogged that day and then um, went and had the meeting. And like during that meeting, I was, I was like a firecracker. Like, you know, I couldn't sit still cause I was just thinking about sprinting to the warehouse, which is literally like, 30 meters away from the library yeah so i went right went in got the game came home chucked it in and then you know you had to and download the, <clears throat> the whatever it's called before you could play it and um bro i remember just being like super hyped that there was only one game before that that i was super hyped about which was san andreas like way way back oh, then yeah, you yeah, know yeah. that was the first game that me and my brother and our mates were ever hyped for and this one because it's been so long since being hyped about a game that much anyway you know being hyped about other games but not that much so it was like um like a boiling point and then brown gutted because my first experience i played it on a shitty tv oh and, no bro, the quality was not there and um, <laughs> yeah so you know the scene oh like right at the beginning when you're carrying the log up the little hill just before your house. Yep, yep. Bro, the snow, like, all the colours in the TV, bro, it was super contrasty. So, it was, I couldn't see any of the um, the details in the snow and in the oh. path that I was walking. And I remember almost stopping to go and find another TV somewhere <laughs> just so I could experience it properly in all its glory. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so my first experience of God of War was a bit marred. By, by that experience and I, i'm glad that it came out at the end of the week though because it came out on a friday i think yeah no yeah, yeah. The, and then it yeah. was straight into that weekend so i was just like oh yeah. that's me all weekend yeah. <laughs> and then um funny thing because over the past like few years you know like i'm i'm still a like gamer and movie lover at heart <clears throat> but like over the past few years i haven't been able to play games as much like i haven't played the playstation and blimmin almost a year just because i know when i do bro i I don't get any money done so i had to just make that decision to be disciplined and pick and choose which games i play yeah bro yeah so i was playing it far out and just feeling that old man status and can't even last long before i fall asleep bro oh yeah i I feel you on that bro nah you can't you can't do those like all nighters that you could have been here easily eh? yeah Oh, because I, I did the exact same thing like um, when Final Fantasy VII came out. I was like, as soon as midnight hit, I was like, yep. Because uh, when you preload it, uh, download a game online, as soon as it hits midnight, you can just play it right off yep. the bat. <clears throat> so I was up midnight and I told I told my partner, I was just like, oh, I'm going to be playing this probably all throughout the morning. He said, like, okay, just don't wake me up. Sweet. Chucked it on, played like a, like a couple of hours. And I thought, oh, yeah, I may, might be able to do it until the next morning. And then like 20 minutes later, I was like, nah falling asleep and was like, <laughs> so, <laughs> what am I doing to myself like you know I should have just waited till the morning yeah yeah and you can just go for a big extended period of time yeah yeah oh yeah bro oh. I remember laughing because 
was it that day? No, nah, it was the next day. We went, I remember going to Kmart and then I did a story on my Instagram just talking about like how mean the game was and like then just saying like, wow, but I can't even last long before I just fall asleep now. <laughs> like I can't play it for super, super long extended periods of time. Like, you know, as a kid, I would literally play it all day, all night. Me and my brother used to do those marathons, you know, hire a game overnight, stay up all night, bro. We used to sub in and out. So yep. one would stay up to keep it going. And then one, you know, when the other person woke up, I was like, oh, yeah, carry on. What happened? Oh, yeah, this happened, blah, blah, blah. You know, so you can get caught up on the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carry on. We weren't allowed. We were just sneaking it. <laughs> this was at my nan's house. And then when we were played out in the batch of my uncle's batch, bro, then my nan would come out in the morning and would turn the TV off, but leave the game on and would just pretend to be asleep. Yeah. Wake up. If I was being <laughs> up all night playing the game, no, no, no. And as soon as she went back inside, bro, straight back into it. <laughs> And I thought I thought I still had that stamina, but yeah, not at all. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. still feel like a kid at heart, eh? But you just you can't do it anymore. Yeah. Oh, bro, hard up. So <laughs> let's put them in. We'll give. I'll give everybody who hasn't played the game, who who isn't intending to play the game, just so you fellas can sort of be a little bit on par with what we're talking about. So I'll just give us a little bit of a overview, I suppose. So. The game follows a character named Kratos, who's a demigod, a Greek demigod. His dad is Zeus, and he's got a human mother. And he was a uh, captain. Was it Captain Brew? Or a yeah, man? he was the captain of the one of Spartan, the Spartan, Spartan army. Yeah, yeah, so he was a captain of a Spartan army. Um, real angry dude. Um, he made a deal with the god of war, Ares, um, to destroy his enemies, and then he would become like a servant of, of Ares. He ended up being betrayed he ended up um killing his wife and daughter <clears throat> and then he went on this journey pretty much in a nutshell he ended up just killing all the gods <laughs> in the greek pantheon and then um that's where the story ended and then now they haven't told us how many years have passed but now he's in north uh the norse um pantheon <clears throat> he has a son now um and that's where this journey of this game begins. Uh, he's a lot older. He's a lot um, sort of quieter. Because in the, the early games, he was just yelling all the damn time. <laughs> you know, real violent. And somehow in this game, you know, although it's a real violent game, they managed to capture all these subtle nuances of character, of storytelling. Um, and... Yeah, it was a beautiful game. Most of the reviewers, you know, they gave it top marks and it deserved it. And it got the best, most deserving award, which is the game of the year. Um, the same year that Red Dead Redemption 2 came out, which was another masterpiece, which is a game that took like nine years to make. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, that's insane. So, um, yeah, bro. So we'll jump in. In God of War, what uh, oof, where do we where do we start? Where do we start? Um, well, let's go to the beginning and gameplay, bro. Like, how does how did the gameplay and all that feel to you? For me, I think when I compare it to the other God of Wars, it was definitely a more um slower paced experience. Whereas with the other, well, the original trilogy of God of War. You know, as we we're just talking about, tells the tale of Kratos and going against the the Greek gods, and it's really like it's a, that's a story of revenge and him trying to right the wrongs that he felt were against him. Mm. And once he once he fi uh, finished God of War three, you, you know he's he's come to that full circle realization that he can you know finally forgive himself for all his past crimes. Mm. He's had that you know that cycle of revenge is over. Um, he doesn't need to be that person anymore and so when that all transitions into god of all the new playstation 4 version of it like right off the bat you can tell like this isn't the same kratos this is a more i don't want to say cool calm and collected because that's not who he is yeah yeah he's still that smart and deep down but he's he's much more reserved you know he's, yeah he's that's the one now bro, yeah he, he's he's trying to He's trying to figure out how to be a father again, mm. you know, and, and trying to be as best of a father as he can be. Um, and 
this is all highlighted in the gameplay. It's it's not as fast paced. Yeah, you know, you're taking the role of. Um, oh, I guess this is a, a story spoiler. Um, yeah, know, yeah let's spoil it. Yeah, the mother, the mother's, you know, the mother's ashes. You know, you you got to take the the journey of that from where they were to the highest peak in all of all of the realms, as I was saying. <laughs> and it's it's a journey it's it's not it's not uh you know from a to b it's from like a to b to c to d yeah. all the way through the alphabet pretty much yeah and, and you see these characters grow over time you see the the struggles that kratos has with trying to be a father to atreus and trying to explain to him that you know he's he's not just he's not just the mortal he's a god as well and then when you see that transition of him trying actually telling atreus that he's a god you see the struggles within Atreus, you know, because he, he, he gets a, a godlike complex and he thinks that, you know, he's indestructible, he's in, invincible. And then you have Kratos come down to him and say, look, no, we need to be better than that. We need yeah. to be better than the gods that, that are around. And, you know, just, just be better people. And you yeah. see, see that, that relationship evolve over time. And yeah, it, like you were saying, it's a masterpiece. And for a game like that to get game of the year, especially in the year where, Red Dead Redemption 2 came out. Spider-Man also yeah. came out that year. And not to, I guess, like, talk down on Spider-Man, because that game was amazing and on itself. Yeah. Far out, like, yeah, just to, the, against those sort of heavyweights to, to get Game of the Year is unreal. And it shows how amazing that game really is. Like, not just the story, the characters, the music. like Bro, oh, straight up. So good. And and you can you can tell that the little pieces that they added to it for the next the sequel is going to be even bigger and better. Bro, they left so many um, you know, little story beats like they can go like multiple directions. Yeah, yeah, and that's all right. Everybody, we're back. Um, the bros' internet just cut out, but these are the things that we deal with, and that's all good. Yep. Anyway, Bob, where were you? Where were you? Uh, we were talking about God of War. Um, I think so. I was talking about how the gameplay of God of War and how it was different from the previous. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I think where I was going with that was, yeah, compared to the original trilogy, um, the new God of War is so much more slow, um, slow paced than you see from the journey from go from all the way from start to end. And then the little nuances that set up for the future titles that go, go up, like when you get to right at the end of the game of um, God of War and, and you see Atreus and they, they're finally coming down from the mountain and uh, you know where this is going. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he go, uh, when he asked Kratos, he's like, why did you call me, why did you call me Atre- uh, Atreus uh, when they call me Loki? Yeah, and yeah. That happens, you're like, excuse me. Did you expect that, bro? Did you expect no, anything like that? Or like... And the thing with like twists, like especially in games and like I guess any sort of media, like you get them far earlier on and and whatever. Yeah, not right at the end like that. Right at the end, and for him to say um, Loki, it's like whoa. Yeah. What? Like this kid is Loki. Holy, holy! Like that was a major twist. That was an Mm. amazing twist. And then to cap it off with that. when he asks Kratos why he called him Atreus and he tells him this amazing story of this yeah. warrior and then you know of how he he well not single-handedly but helped save a lot of his Spartan brothers and he was the most heroic man that he had ever met yeah. and to cap off right at the end of Atreus going huh he finally told a good story because throughout <laughs> the whole journey you know you just have Kratos just blunt and just say you know say what it is like he doesn't expand on his thoughts and feelings and for him to go in, in real real depth and you know, a lot of thought went into the name of you know his son. Yeah. Wow. That was just like, oh, character development. So Brr, good. Hard out. And how um, Atreus said, you actually told a good story. Mimia missed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that was the time out of the whole journey before they had met Mimia that he wasn't there. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have, you, of course, you have those amazing stories from Mimia when you're in the boat, you know. Bro, epic. Hey. Yeah, filling out filling out this epic world that we we've just entered, and you now feel like you're a part of this 
this epic scene and you you realize what's going on a little bit more there's there's not as much vagueness as, yeah. as there was entering the game yeah and now, now you've got this character that that fleshes out all these characters and you know he makes odin and um thor and that look like assholes really yeah yeah like yeah cause we're so used to them sorry we're so used to them being um you know these awesome characters in the marvel movies and yeah get a different twist on them is yeah yeah it's amazing yeah bro i think i think it's a cool like you know look at it and because for me you know like with us like being moldy <clears throat> you know a lot of these stories you know in mcu and especially in god of war you know they feel like ours because we have all the same gods pretty much you know they just have different names you know they represent the same sort of realms and I think that's why they probably connect a little bit different. And, um, you know, for me, I'm always like, I always think about the fact that, you know, these people are making these games about, um, you know, like these mythologies and these pantheons. And then you, I think about like how the fact that they're so different, you know, this one of like Thor and Odin and how they're like assholes. And then the MCU, they're like, you know, the heroes, they're, they're cool ass. And then I always think about, like, well, how did that happen? Like, how are they that different to each other? You know, like somewhere along the way, some things got lost in translation or they got warped to make them more interesting or whatever. But yeah, I thought that was interesting. And I like how, um, you know, how Atreus is low key and how his, the mother's name is Faye, short for La Faye. Mm. And then in, um, in the MCU, Loki's dad is Faye, so Faye is a, a male, but his name is Laufey. They pronounce the name a little bit different. Yeah. And I remember like thinking, you know, when it was revealed that he was um, Atreus, and the, you know, when all those dots started connecting for me, I was like, man, like if someone was real onto it, they would have known that he was Loki before that, even, you know, and then even seeing interviews with Corey Barlog, you know, the game director. He's saying that they sprinkled a little, you know, a few hints here and there. Um, one of them being when um, Kratos told Atreus that they're gods. And then he says, hmm, can I turn into animals or can I turn into an animal? And that's what Loki can do. Like a Loki can turn into animals. So that was his, you know, one little Easter egg for people who are really, really looking deep into it. I'm sure some people would have figured it out. And then another one was... Um, you know, when they met the world serpent and they're talking to the world serpent and the world serpent was talking to um, Atreus and he said that he looked familiar and because the world serpent is Loki's child, mm. you know, and, you know, those little things and then how when they're talking to um, um, Freya, or Freya, Freya, I was almost saying Frigga because that's her name in the MCU, yeah. Freya, and um, she said just one day the world serpent was there and because there's you know there's talks of like time travel and all that maybe he came back from the future obviously he must have if he's loki's son or you know loki's child and loki doesn't even know about him yet but uh, yeah i thought it was cool that they tied all of those little subtle things i don't know how they did it bro like what a nightmare that must have been to try and perfectly place all of these little nuances in there for it to make sense for it to have that slow, long burn throughout the whole, like, 35, 40-hour campaign. <clears throat> um, yeah, I thought that was amazing how they did that. That's, that's the stuff that I live for. You know, there's little, there's little things that only 2% of people will actually appreciate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I totally agree with you, bro. Like, and what, even watching the documentary Raising Kratos and seeing the amount of work that they put into this you know and you could tell that they really cared about this world and this character and really putting in the research and bringing in the experts to you know tell them this is how you know this worked and why that worked and i thought that was really really cool to be able to see the behind the scenes of how a game is made and especially a game of this scale this grand scale i think that was that was really really cool um but yeah, it's such an amazing world, and look, those little Easter eggs are yeah. They, I thoroughly enjoy those, especially on a second like look back at it. Like you don't have to necessarily play it again, but um, even like find, uh, other people finding it. I think one in particular, I have to double check on this, but I think back at the house 
um, Loki's name is carved in one of the woods. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, and I think someone found that um, er, oh, not not early on, but like oh, like months after the game had been completed and tweeted it out. And then oh, caught, was it on the end of his bed or something? I think I think like so. House I'm of Loki or something like that. Eh? Yeah, something like that. And then um, someone had tweeted it out, and Corey was just like, "Oh, someone's finally found it!" Like you know. It's just like, how is this, like, you know, for months on end, you know, the game's been out for ages. How did no one see it, like, right off the bat? And then, you, oh, but yeah, those little things are so cool to see. <laughs> Bro, I saw a, uh, an interview with Corey, and he was talking about, um, which was it? It might have been an E3 or something they went to. This was before the game had come out, and they had a few of the um, items from the game. So they had the toys on display. And then they had um, Freya's necklace as well on display. And then on the show floor, bro, one of their workers, I think it was one of their workers, they went and looked at it and because it had carved in the necklace in old runes, Norse runes, Boulder's name. Oh. <laughs> and because they, they had it displayed as Freya's necklace. And then if people went to look at that, <clears throat> you know, put two and two together, they would have been like, oh. Oh, no, because they hadn't told, they hadn't said that she was Freya, but if they had looked at the game, at the little bit of gameplay, because she was already in the gameplay footage by then, they would have been able to go, oh, why is she wearing like a necklace with Boulder's name on it? Maybe she's his mother, you know, that sort of thing. Mm. And I remember no one, no one clicked on it, thankfully. And they, they're just saying like, man, we like just dodged a bullet. <laughs> yeah. Hard, nearly spoiled their own game. <laughs> hard out. And there was, um, oh, this was another amazing part of the game was, um, when you first meet Boulder and that whole speech that he says to you outside the house. Mm. And I saw an interview and um, the reason that he was there was for Frey or oh, for um, Faye. He wasn't mm. there for Kratos. He didn't even know who the hell Kratos was or cared about him. So that whole speech, if you listen to that whole speech and you imagine him talking to Faye, it all makes more sense and like how he talks about in that speech, how he says, um, your kind is supposed to be so much better, you know, so much smarter than us. And he's talking about the giants as opposed to the Greeks, mm. which is what Kratos thought. And I just thought that was like, oh, yeah, this is mind blowing, bro. How they did that, how they made it apply to Kratos and Faye and how, you know, the reactions on Kratos' face during that whole time. He's like, how did they find me? How, how does he know who I am? You know, all that mm. sort of stuff. Mm. Yeah, bro, it's, um, yeah, that speech actually, actually thinking back on it now is, yeah, pretty buzzy when you put into that perspective that he's actually not speaking to Kratos, he's speaking to Faye. And then, yeah, with that whole story of how Odin and the gods are trying to find, uh, get into the land of the giants and trying to find how, how to get there and how the story evolves into that. Um, probably, I guess my favorite part of the game is when Atreus gets sick and Faye says you have to go to hell, but yeah. the weapon that you have is uh, will not work in there because everything is frozen. And then you just see that light bulb moment. When you have that light bulb moment, it's like, well, there's only one weapon that you know would work in there. <laughs> and then when you see him travel back to go to his house to go <sighs> pick up that weapon, oh, oh man, I was just buzzing. And then when you see Athena pop up, oh, that was... Bro. That was unbelievable. And with the camera going around him too, how it just keeps yeah. circling him that whole trip. <sighs> yeah, seeing seeing that reaction of like him still battling with the you know the ghosts of his past and mm. realizing that the thing that will save his son is something that he tried to hide away. These, yeah. these weapons that he was gifted from Ares to slaughter all these people, which ended up slaughtering his first family. Yeah. Will now help save his, you know, his new one. And him accepting that. Oh, yeah. Masterpiece. Masterpiece. I'm sorry to And then that, that line, like how um, she's talking to him, you know, like, you'll never be a father, all of that stuff. Oh, I know. Yeah. And how she says, you will always be a monster. And then now he just says, I know, but I'm your monster no longer. And he just, mm. you know, he accepts it. He's, this is the first time in his whole arc, you know, from the very first God of War, that he's actually taken responsibility for what he's done. Because, you mm. know, in the end, you know, although some of it may not be directly his fault, but he he initiated all of that when he first called upon Ares to to pretty much cheat, you know, in war. 
So, you know, this was his first moment of accepting who he is, his whole past, and realizing that he has to in order to save his son, which he's willing to do now. And, um, yeah, bro, I remember just getting goosebumps. And, like, the, another thing, too, because I saw a spoiler before the game came out, you know, oh. when, the, when the embargo got lifted and they could start sharing reviews. Yeah. Some pricks. You know, there, there's those people, eh, bro, who just like to ruin it because that's that's how they get a kick out of something sometimes. But I saw a screenshot. Like, I was just scrolling through YouTube and then there was a, it showed a screenshot of Athena in the doorway and then I knew straight away, like, what was probably going to be associated with that. Mm. So... Although, you know, although I still had goosebumps when I experienced that whole sequence, I knew that, you know, it was was coming to that. But yeah, that was still epic and how... And I remember wondering too, like, before that, um, how how would it work? Like, how would the Blades of Chaos work with the camera being where it is? Because, you know, Mm. usually the camera's far away so you can see his big swinging motions. But they made it work, you know, it looked cool. And um, I was also thinking about, like, this is just me just geeking out, <laughs> but I was thinking about how he was going to place the swords on his back with the axe already there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. usually he has them in an X, eh? <clears throat> yeah. And then he does he does that. I was like, Fuzz are on to it. Fuzz made it look cool. Yeah, they figured it out. Oh, man, that sucks that you got um, ruined by the spoilers. Cause, yeah. Oh, coincidentally enough, bro, um, I don't know if you were, were spoiled by them, but there were the Last of Us Two leaks. No, nah, I haven't seen them, so I'm glad. I don't even look at comments. I'm just like, nah. Oh man! So like, oh, I just happened to be on Twitter the night that it that they came out, and it was just all over everyone's like feed. And I tried to not look at it, but like because you're scrolling and you just you just happen to see it, it's just like, oh, okay. So this part's been ruined for me. Great, yeah. thank you. It's, um, oh, I was really pissed. I was really pissed off to be honest. Yeah, of course, because you've been waiting for so long. Oh, Seven no. years, man. Yeah, and then like the the ratchet thing is that like the director of that game, his his Twitter feed from now on has just been filled up with all these like people that have seen the spoilers, and have just been spoiling it for everyone. Yeah, else. bro. And he's had to go on and just be like, "Don't read the comments on my yeah. tweet." And every single one of his tweets, he'll end it. He's just like, "Don't read the comments." Yeah. And it's just yeah. Like, it's a shame that, you know, he has to do that because, you know, he's put in, uh, and the team themselves have put in all these years of effort to try and bring out, you know, another yeah, amazing bro. game, another amazing experience. And, yeah, I just don't understand why people, like, would want to do that. Bro, Duck. it's, 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 like, it's it's one of those things where um, you can't take it back, eh, you know? Like, people listening, like, if you're into these episodes you understand you know because you obviously love this sort of thing that that happened with me with blimmin endgame you oh. know that got spoiled for me too i was like you freaking mm. punk <laughs> you know mm. why and then um i had heard about this dude and where was it china i believe like don't quote me on there but there was a dude who was just running around bro at the movie theater yelling out what was what happened at the end of endgame oh. and then he got beaten up too you were thinking like, oh, good job. Yeah. You knew what you were doing, you, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> this is, it's a real thing for our note, you know. Yeah. There are some some weirdos out there who like to spoil people's enjoyment just so they can feel cool for two seconds. Um, but yeah, back into God of War. And um, but have you played it on Give Me God of War? I, I didn't even give it a try, bro. I started out on not give, not God not the Give Me God of War, but the one just below it. Yeah, because I, I like a little bit of a challenge, and it, man, that was so challenging to play. <laughs> and I think I got through. I hadn't got to, um, I guess halfway through the game. I must have got about like maybe even a quarter, maybe less of that. And I just remember being like, Nah, I want to actually like enjoy this game. I don't want. <laughs> it's just a grind. Is so hard, and then like even go, even get going through on on normal, and then facing the um the Valkyries, bro, so hard, shit you, and and oh, I just I contemplated just giving up on it. I was like, nah, this isn't <laughs> worth it anymore. Like I've finished the game. Like what? Like what do I need to do this? But, um, oh no, it was, but it was cool actually going through. Like it is a it is an amazing like challenge, and yeah, 
yeah, I'm not usually one to go and try things on the hardest difficulties. I'll give it a go, but if it's too hard for me, nah. Yeah. Not really worth it. Especially like a single player campaign. Like I just want to, I want to enjoy the experience as yeah, much. Right. I have it to be a challenge, but you know, I, I still want to enjoy that cinematic experience. Like, <laughs> Yeah, don't want it to be a bloody uh, like you know a grind for me. <laughs> yeah, bro, because that was I. Pretty much every game that I play, if it's a you know story based game, I always just play it on like the normal setting, like not easy. I play it on normal, so it's not too easy, but one that I can enjoy. And yeah, I'm the same, bro. Like I don't want to just be there like grinding to prove it that I can do it because I'm just like, nah, it just takes too long and it makes me. <laughs> hate it yeah. like some of those valkyrie fights man i remember that first one i was like holy hell why mm. weren't they in the main st- I, su- I suppose i know why they weren't because people would have maybe not have even made it to the end of the game mm. you know because they're they're way harder than the whole game mm. you know and i remember uh, probably my hardest fight was um what's her name the one in um uh what's that that fire round, what's that one called? Moosebullheim. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the one in Moosebullheim up on the Blumen mm. volcano, pretty much. She was my hardest. That attack, that Valhalla attack. Yeah. Just comes and wastes you in the neck. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I died. I think I died more times facing her than I did um, with the Valkyrie Queen. Oh, wow. <sighs> Their Valkyrie Queen. Wow, uh, I've, I've been frustrated in games before, but that was one of the most frustrating times I've had to. Just stop and not, yeah, not get as angry as I did. It took me so many. I think it took me like well over twenty attempts. You know, it, I, when I finally did it, just late. At, I, I think it was like late at night, and I finally finished it. I was just so happy, <laughs> so happy. Bro, it's uh, um, you know, because in this game, eh, like, what's different to the all the other games is you have uh, shield now, you mm. know, and you can. Yeah, it's about not just about um offense you know it's about defense and countering and that's what i loved even more about it you know you had to be more um thoughtful about how you play like this is definitely a game that kids can't play because it's not just button mashing you actually have to be thoughtful about how you fight because some enemies you literally cannot beat them just button mashing eh? you have to identify their fight patterns and all that and i like um how it wasn't because for me like I'm I'm not like a huge role playing game player just because I don't have that much time to like commit because I know with those games you have to be able to commit a you yep. need to be able to enjoy it and I like that it had an element of that but not too much so that it became just a grind just to play you know for me anyway like some a lot of people love that you know that they, they love how deeply layered all the customization and all that stuff goes and it was yeah for me it was just enough and I love how it's a like a retractable shield, so you're not just carrying around a shield all the damn time. I was like, wow, that's that's super clever, actually. Is it like have you played a game that they have something like that? Uh, off the top of my head, nah, nah, nothing. You, you, when you when you see a shield like that, you always see it like as a whole, like nothing retractable, like the one that Kratos has. Yeah, nah, yeah, nothing comes to mind. Yeah, bro, I think it's also and how he has his um his dodge. You know, he has like, how you can do like a slight dodge and you can do a roll. I was like, man, mm. I saw I saw this fight, bro, this video of this dude facing the Valkyrie Queen and just every single movement was perfect. He did it on Gimme God of War and he did it like untouched. Brand like millimeters. He'll just, he'll just know her exact timing and then he'll just do his little dodge, smoke her up, dodge, smoke her up. And it was just like poetry in motion. Mm. Yeah, it's always crazy to see those sorts of videos, eh? That people just have perfected it down to a T. Bro, straight oh. up. Yeah. It's I incredible. wish I could be like that, eh? <laughs> I tried very much. I was just like, wow. This is, it's like, um, it gets to the point where it's kind of like a um, like a fighting game where you have to get used to frames and hitboxes and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Where, you yeah. know, every little nuance of the animation, then you'll know yeah. when to push the buttons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, bro. And like, for this series, bro, because, you know, no doubt they're really well into development. And I'm super stoked that they made a shitload of money with this game. So, and they've got all the backing, you know, there'll be no doubt in Sony's mind now that they can make 
an even better game. So they'll have all the resources and all that that they need. What are your hopes, bro, for, for the next game? Uh, I don't really want to... Uh, I guess I do want to say more of the same, but <laughs> yeah, I do want to see something, I guess, changed up a little bit because, you know, you, you do want the same experience, but you don't want it to be exactly the same. Yeah. You, you, want, you want to see some sort of evolution yeah. with the game. Um, for God of War, for me, like, I don't know if I want to see like it, like a direct sequel where they just started off right off the bat or yeah. have it five, ten years down the track and you see Atreus is a little bit older. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. There's so many possibilities that they could really take with it. And it'll, it'll be interesting to see when, it, when they first release their, their trailer, whenever that is, if it's this year, next year, or the following year. Who, who knows, really? Um, It'll be interesting yeah, to see the type of reaction and how they're gonna, how they're going to, yeah, take this story and continue it because yeah, like we said, there's, there's so many possibilities that they could go down. Yeah. And then, did you see the the extra ending that they add on to the end? If you went back to go home, yeah, 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 bro, yeah. So obviously they they're definitely sticking with who that's like the focus of the story is going to be around Thor and how yeah. he's going to be in the world. So that that excites me, and I, yeah. just, I just hope that yeah those those sort of they sort of keep on introducing characters like that down the track and yeah. answering questions that that were in the game, like when Atreus got sick and you're taking him up to Freya, who blew the uh, horn to summon the world yeah, serpent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so hopefully, like those little things that like get answered. Uh, yeah, I hope they don't. I hope they don't beat around the bush with that. I hope I hope they yeah. straight up and just like. This is what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so. I, 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 to be honest, I'm not too sure how far away we are from a sequel for this game because yeah, I think that from what I've been reading about and what Sony have been like, how their releases have been going on, it seems that uh, I don't know if, if God of War will be an immediate release for the PS5. Mm. Yeah. But it will definitely be in the first couple of years. So hope, yeah. Yeah, hopefully in, in the next year or so, we'll see God of War. Yeah, some sort of like info or something. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah bro. I don't know. What, why, why, what, are you, what are you hoping for? The, the... There's a few. <laughs> um, there's a few. One of them is, um, like, I want to know Freya's, oh, Freya Blim and Faye's story. You know, I want to know, like, what her role in, in Jotunheim and, you know, with Among the Giants was. And... You know, because she was just a regular sized person, mm. you know, and the X, you know, the Leviathan X is actually hers. So she was obviously not just a nobody. If they, if the makers of Mjolnir made an X for her to sort of counter um, Mjolnir. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm, I'm interested to find out what her story is. Obviously, I want to know like what happened between God of War 3 and this, you know, like how did he end up here? Why? Why here of all places? Um, and then another one, you know, at the, when they go to Jotunheim and there's the carvings in the wall that reveal themselves. And then there's that picture of Atreus holding Kratos and he's got like the wheel serpent coming out of his mouth. And if you look at Kratos, he's got an arm, uh, like a hand missing, his right hand. And then through all the whole story, like they talk about Tia. And um, Tia, he was the one who tricked um Fenrir the wolf which is Loki's son who was a sign of like Ragnarok and he um he tricked him because he said he said to him like if I can wrap this ribbon tie you up with this ribbon I think it was it was like a magic ribbon or something um I can't remember, my mate told me this but they tied him up and then um Fenrir wasn't super super trusting and he said I oh, yeah, to see if you're telling the truth or not i'll get you to put your hand in my mouth so if you're lying i'll bite your hand off so that's how tia lost his hand and then i um, one and like there was that picture of tia you know they're carving how you see those um those carvings with those sort of information story sort of board things and there's one of tia and he's got like a beard and you can see parts of it i'm wondering if in their mythology maybe kratos is that figure you know that that would be like insane and how Tia they say Tia he was the person who could travel realms and all that 
and then there was that carving and it had him like he had traveled to the Greek pantheon to um what else was there to Norse to Japanese and to the Irish pantheon so like the druids and all that so I'm like interested in all of that whole sort of story right there and um yeah obviously with Thor and um maybe we can go to Asgard in the next one you know because you know it was one of those ones when you go to the Bifrost they wouldn't let you travel to so I'm interested to see all of that um maybe the next one you don't play as Kratos maybe you play as Atreus or something like that uh there's just so many directions eh, where it could go and bro just from what they did with this game and like Corey Barlog behind you know sort of running the team creatively like I have blooming nothing but faith that they'll they'll crack it whatever it whatever they end up doing bro um yeah and I have I'm I'm insanely excited yeah bro yeah I fully echo those sentiments man I, I I've got nothing but faith in Corey and the the team in Santa Monica I think they they deserve it to be honest um mm-hmm. with, with the God of War release and it's interesting because prior to that game coming out, how they had tested the character and the world and how many people people were burnt out with Kratos. And, you know, they, they necessarily, they didn't really want to see another God of War game. And then I think, in the, I think it's in the documentary when they pitched it to one of the Sony executives and he just straight walked out. He was just like, no, nah, yep. didn't really want a bar of it. And then like, just like, Imagine being a part of the team and then just hearing and seeing all that stuff and you're like, are we even like, is this even worth yeah, doing? Yeah, like, hard. And then to see the the obvious reaction from it and how, you know, how well it's been received worldwide, like that must be so satisfying for them and then must give them the the trust that what they're doing is right. And yeah. well, for me as a, you know, a gamer and a fan of the series, well, I, I believe in them and what they're doing is is nothing but, amazing and yeah i definitely definitely will get the sequel yeah 100 percent. yeah i'm really really looking forward to it yeah bro and like with um you know watching that documentary because i just watched it again last week i think it was um just to refresh myself and you know really just to dive back into that realm again and how this this really like if this didn't work out a eh, like the studio probably would have went under because they had that game just before you know three years into development and then it got the can you know mm. and then before that was ascension which wasn't received well and that really sort of sealed kratos's fate and to in everyone else's eyes you know people were just like oh he's just the same dude one-dimensional angry mm. he just wants to kill people you know he's kind of like a child <laughs> hey, yeah. really he's got that childlike um anger and response you know lack of responsibility that sort of thing and just the amount of like stress that they went through and how they moved studios how um you know because that game got canned early they had like 150 employees that they had to find something for them to work on because they they came too early eh? because they mm. they weren't far enough into development of god of war to have jobs for them and then you know just from a lot of um people's feedback you know just the general and public just saying like ah like this dude's dumb like you know no one cares about kratos sort of thing and i love how Corey, um he said why you know although people don't like him because of you know obvious reasons what if we, um, you know, work on a story that's kind of about redeeming him, you know, taking him all the way to this place and then bringing him back, you know, not not forgiving him for everything he's done, but, you know, maybe getting him to a point where people can go, oh, like, um, you know, having some sort of empathy for him and, Bro, they did it, <laughs> you know? and it's it's crazy. And how at the very beginning of the game, when you hunt that that um deer, and um he can't even he like doesn't even know how to be a father. He doesn't even know how to put his hand on Atreus's back to comfort him. And then you go right throughout the whole story how he calls him boy most of the time, and then towards the end he starts calling him Atreus. And then right at the end he like they walk after they 
um, spread um, phase ashes. And then he's walking up on that little ledge and he's got his hand on his back. You know, that sort of arc had come full circle. And um, I learned a funny story actually from Corey about the reason that he calls him boy other than it representing him being like a sort of standoffish father is because early on in development, they, they didn't have a name for Atreus, so they just ended up calling him boy. <laughs> <laughs> and then it stuck in there. And then, you know, like wow. fast forward to the to the Game Awards when um, Christopher Judge and Sonny, they produced, oh, they presented the award for content creator of the year and how everyone was like, say boy, say boy. <laughs> and then he does, you know, like yeah. how something funny like that has turned into this, it's like a cultural sort of thing now, you know, you associate God of War and Kratos with boy, <laughs> they were saying mm. that line. I think, yeah, there's just, um, there's, there's so many things in this and I, you know, we're sort of just scraping the surface. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's crazy that like something like that, that you don't necessarily, they didn't have an answer for and they just turned it into the thing that it is. That, that That's an amazing, like shows how great that they are at what they do. And, I think as storytellers, they've definitely evolved over time, um, the God of War team. Like, the original trilogy of, of God of War and how that story is told is, is, is amazing. Yeah, I it's agree. The, that's, that story of, of revenge is, is amazing. And I, can, I fully understand why people are burnt out of the, the Kratos character because you don't really see too much character development in those other side games, you know, in Ascension and, and all that, you mm. just saw the, same, the exact same person. But if you were to take God of War 1, 2, and 3, you see the character development over time and it, and it hits that, that peak in the third one where he finally accepts for what he is and he finally gets his revenge on Zeus and all the other gods. And then for him to, I guess, completely transform himself in this new game and see him become more down to earth and more yep. of a... I guess more human because you see, yeah. him, see him, you see him battle himself or the, go through these trials and tribulations and wanting to be a better person, but not yeah. knowing how to do it. And then just that evolve over time and see him working on himself, working on how to be a better father and yeah. Yeah. Figuring it out on, on himself is, is great character development. And like, while you see, while you see amazing character development in the first trilogy, they take they took a lot of time whereas in this game yeah. it was it was pretty much from start to end you see you see the character evolve the character become something more than what he is like not not this angry spartan god that just wants to murder and, yeah. and do all these bad things you see this this man he's a, he's just a man he's not a god he's he's trying to become a better father and yeah better person and yeah that that's yeah that's that's great, great character development. <laughs> yeah, right. And I love um, the speech that he says, like right at the end when you kill Boulder, and then um, Freya, she's sort of like threatening him, you know, to tell, does Atreus know who he is, you know, and who you are? And then he just says, boy, listen close, um, you know, I killed my father and all of that sort of stuff and then how um atreus is like is that is that what it is to be a god you know sons killing their fathers killing their mothers you know all of that sort of stuff and then how he like has that little intimate one-to-one with him and he's just like no like it doesn't need to be like this um you know we can be better and all that sort of stuff and you know you really just see that growth of of this character and even like at that point too because you know, pretty much like halfway through the game when Atreus finds out that he's a god, he just turns into a little dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> and then he sort of goes, so he quickly goes through that phase of thinking he's immortal and above everybody else, especially the two dwarves. And then he comes back down to that point where, you know, before the end of the game where him and um, his dad sort of see eye to eye and you can tell that they've both learned from each other, you know, and there, there's that saying that um, 
Corey Barlog said with this game, it was about Kratos learning to be a man or to be a human, and then Atreus learning to be a god. You know, although Kratos hates that part of himself that he's a god, you know, he he sort of accepted and realizes he doesn't have to be the the bad version of a god that is all he knows. You know, all the gods that he's seen have just been liars and you know people who have their own agendas, that sort of thing. So, yeah, I think it's just been amazing in that in those sort of senses. Mm, yeah, that's it's kind of yeah. Thinking on it now, when you think of that development that Atreus has when he realizes he becomes a god, it sort of goes back to when Kratos, when he becomes a god, like he has that sort of like that same hunger for power that Kratos had, and yep. that like at the start of God of War two, you know, when he goes through and and destroys that that yeah. city. Yeah, it's sort of yeah. You see that with Atreus because you know he thinks he's invincible. He thinks he's, um, well, he is a god, but you know he thinks he's better than everyone else. So, to see that development from you know such a small you know a, a kid you know yeah. that's what nine ten years old and and for him to come to the realization that they need to be better, yeah, um, and seeing it with Kratos as well for him to be better you know they're still learning they're still trying to figure their uh, their place out and yeah but, uh, it's great <laughs> and he even like disrespects his mother like disrespects her ashes and all that saying like you know she she wasn't even as good as us and then Kratos like growls him you know for disrespecting her like that and he said that she was better mm. I was like wow that's pretty cool showing love for his wife she yeah. was better than a god you know and then come to find out that she's she's a blimmin' giant, you know, she's on her yeah. own level of of thing and yeah, no, that's oh, this is it's just so interesting. And how like at the end, but when you're climbing up those stairs towards um throwing your ashes out, there's that last handprint and how throughout the whole game, whenever you saw any of those markings around the world, those were left there by her. Mm. And so she could she can see into the future and then you know with right at the end when you see Thor and how it was just a dream Atreus's dream so there's a like her powers sort of you know carrying over to him so she's got those sort of powers he's got those powers of foresight as well so it's yeah it's interesting to see what this um what this version of Loki is going to be like because you know the only one that we know of is Tom Hiddleston you know the the mischief maker who's really just selfish you know and up to his own up to his own sort of agenda yeah you know so yeah bro it's oh this they nailed it they nailed it i'm sure anybody listening if you haven't played it you fellas can hear the passion in our voice yeah. <laughs> can totally. see it in our faces if you're watching the video and this is what it's like you know in the gaming world especially with story driven games that's why you hear about people who cannot stop talking about games sometimes because it's like that. It's like this. You know, it's, it makes you feel some type of weight. <laughs> mm. Yeah, bro. I think, like, video games in particular, especially this new era that we're in, I think they transcend a lot of what, like, traditional media, you know, television shows and even movies, they, they take it to such a new level now because you're in that world you're you're controlling these characters you see them from from the very start of their journey to the end of it and you feel like you're a part of the the crew you feel like you're yeah. with Kratos and, and Atreus and um like for a gap for me a game that I would I would say is near perfect is something like Red Dead Redemption 2 right yeah the journey, like not to obviously um go off the the path but like that game is an unreal masterpiece for me I, I i had it just above god of war yeah for my personal game of the year yeah because the journey that you go on with um arthur morgan and dutch and the whole crew you feel so connected to these characters that you feel like you're a part of the gang and to see that they're, they're the last pretty much the last cowboy bandit 
the end of the outlaw AJ, yeah. bro. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the they're the last the last gang, pretty much, and they're trying to they're trying to figure out themselves in the world. And right off the bat, with with after you see, you know, he's not a good person. He's not. He he yeah. always says throughout the whole game, "I'm a bad man. I'm a bad man." Yeah, he does these bad things, and as the person, as the player, you're controlling him. You can't stop him. Like, yeah, you can't make him do something good because what he thinks he's doing is good. Yeah, and what what is good for you know him, the gang, you know, who he considers his family for for Dutch because that's his father figure. You, yeah, and you think, wow, this this fella is a bad bad dude, and you, being able to play this game, you, you think. You're a part of that world. You're a part of this gang. You see these characters that you grow attached to. And then, when you, like, so what I'm trying to say is, like, in this game, you it takes the experience of being a video game to another level. Yeah. Like, you experience the world as, as it is. Yeah. You experience the characters for who they are. And then when you see some of them die and you see some of them move on, you feel that, yeah. you feel that emotion, that raw emotion. And for me, I think Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the very few games that would be able to translate into a movie, into a Yeah, movie. hell yeah. With ease. And so that, that shows the, the power of like a game like that that's so narrative-driven, so story-based, and yeah. with these amazing cast of characters. And the soundtrack, oh my lord. Oh, oh. bro. That's another thing that has leveled right up is the music and the score of these games. Yeah, yeah, like you see when, when a game like that has just all these things and, and is able to take it to another level, I bro. think it's like, that's where video games are at its peak. And One of my favorite songs is from Red Dead, bro. It's Unshaken. Yeah. I oh. thrashed that song. Oh, so good. So, it's so amazing, good. amazing, man. And like, bro, you're, you're so right, you know, about um, just the state of gaming right now and in terms of story and character. You know that a lot of um, these actors who play these characters, you know, they say it's it's this it's just like being in a movie, you know, and like when they read a lot of these scripts, they can't believe that it's for a game, you know, because mm-hmm. it's like they're reading for a movie or something. And I I heard Corey say this other cool thing, and it was about um, really just how young gaming is. You know, and he, and he thinks about um, film. You know, when you think about film and you think about the early days of film you know, it was silent at one point, you know, that where you had to read what the previous sequence was about, you know, as opposed to like listening to dialogue and all that. And then, you know, you moved into <laughs> black and white film where they did have audio, but, you know, they could only do movies on a soundstage. They couldn't do it on location to now where, you know, film has come so far and it's developed, um, you know, it can be more... Um, nuanced you know all of that and i think we're sort of at the beginning of that stage for gaming you know mm-hmm. I, I believe really this whole generation of gaming so like right at the end of playstation 3 like with the last of us is when it like you know they're for me anyway personally because i haven't played heaps of games but you know that was like i said earlier that was a game that just stood out narratively um you know character wise from any of the other games that I had played before. And because, you know, before, you know, just my view on it, like games with, you know, it's about entertainment. You know, it wasn't about trying to be a cool ass story. It was really just about having a simple goal, which was beat this baddie and save the princess. (laughs) Something simple as like that Mm -hmm. to now where it's like, you know, where it gets to the point where some of the decisions that you make one doesn't feel purely good. One doesn't feel purely bad. It's sort of like gray, you know, one is, it's a good decision, but there's these cons to that decision and vice versa on the other side. So, you know, some of these sort of decisions and stories now, you know, for me anyway, they, they sort of teach you about like, they're like real life, you know, there's, there's decisions in life that ain't just black and white, you know, you have to weigh up, the pros and cons of each and then you end up choosing the one that has the least amount of cons mm-hmm. and you know that's that's the sort of um level that gaming is at now and man they're, they're just going to get better and better and with technology getting better in order to assist them in making those things happen 
you know, with reducing load times and being able to have bigger maps, um, you know, all of those sort of things, not having to design little hallways to crawl through just so the next section can load, mm. <laughs> you know. Mm. I'm glad that it's it's really just taking restrictions off off the developers and off the storytellers so they can actually tell the stories exactly how they want to tell them. Yeah. And being, being able to be put in a position where they want to tell stories that they want to tell, like not being forced by, you know, the big, the big conglomerate company that is telling yep. them, you know, you're going to do this game this way because um, we want to, we want to be able to project these like X amount of sales or what, you know, mm. whatever it is, you mm. know, or just following the trends, you know, like we want to make a, um, we want to make a game that's like, like, Fortnite and, yeah. be, and for it to be as popular as it is like there's only going to ever be one Fortnite. Like, yeah there's only ever going to be one like red dead redemption one god of war like yeah. just you know do what you want to do do yeah. something you're like like these these guys are doing what they're passionate about and telling the stories that they want to tell and we're getting we're as you know um people that consume that their content we're really spoiled for choice because bro tell me about it i've said that heaps of times like actually spoiled for choice yeah so many so many like variation of the games that you can that for people of all walks of life to enjoy like not just like not just regular gamers you know that'll pick up a game because i this is the new the new thing get into sweet like they're games for people that you know they just want to chill out they just want five minutes to to yeah. relax, you know, take their time and, you know, do what they want to do with it. All these people like myself that would love the 30, 40 hour experience of <laughs> being, being able to live your life as a cowboy. And yeah, go, yeah, bro. America. Yeah. And it, you know, that's, that's an amazing, it's an amazing time to be a part of. And the stories that are told like in Red Dead Redemption, oh, God of yeah. War, um, Horizon Zero Dawn. Bro. Right? It's an amazing story, and like even Unchar- like the Uncharted trilogy, oh, the yep. four games in Uncharted, um, those those are like the Indiana Jones of video games. Like yes. Indiana Jones is is an iconic movie series. Yep. Like it's the best way to describe it because it's so action paced. Like yep. it tells the story of a of treasure hunting. It's and- pretty much exactly Indiana ga- Indiana Jones as a game. Yeah, it's exactly what you would want in, in an yeah. Indiana Jones game. And yeah, we are really sport for all these different types of games that we, we've got. We've even got like games being remade, like the old classic Spyro Crash Band. <laughs> exactly. CTR. Yeah, CTR. It's un- like unreal that we're in a, in a time where we're getting these brand new IPs on top of IPs that we grew up with that are being remade for this generation. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> yeah. It's actually that. incredible when... Like, this is just gaming we're talking about. Even in the film sector, bro, it's the same. Like, mm. spoiled for choice as well, like, with with what's happening. And, bro, like, yeah. There's, there's sometimes, like, I have to pinch myself where I have to say, like, man, what a time to be alive. Mm. You know, in terms of entertainment and, you know, it's, yeah, all of that. All of the stuff that Square Eyes podcast is about, you know. <laughs> Blimmin, there's so many things and bro, I love that you said Horizon Zero Dawn because I bought it last year that was the last game I played on PlayStation actually and that I think I finished it yeah about a year ago and that was why I put the game away because I got addicted and didn't do anything else <laughs> and um, that that was probably one of the most that's up there like that story of that game is right up there for me like I've got that game in my top five. Yeah. Like my top top five games of all time. I've got Breath of the Wild as number one for me. Ocarina of Time. That's the first game that ever blew my mind. Um, God of War. Um Horizon Zero Dawn and Red Dead. That's probably my top five all time all time games. Yeah. And they're just like they're all so different from each other. Yeah. And totally. like like you were saying before, bro, like um, how it's cool seeing developers make games that they want to make instead of trying to make another version of someone else's game. Mm. There's plenty of space, you know, for original IPs, you know, like Horizon Zero Dawn came from developers who make Killzone games, you know, mm. out of nowhere, like 
Last of Us came from the people who made bloody um, Jack and Dexter, <laughs> you know? So like, and then, um, you know, there's all these different directions, like this new Spider-Man game came from the people who made Ratchet and Clank, you know, Insomniac. So it's, it's cool seeing these, um, all these different studios really just backing themselves, eh? you know, just saying like, yeah, we're going to go for this new IP. Um, we believe we can make a good game. You know, we're going to try and step out of the mold that we've put ourselves in and that people think we should stay in. Yeah. Just, you know, take a leap of faith and fire. It's just been paying off. And like where PlayStation is right now with all of their, you know, their PlayStation studios and, you know, that, that new animation is sort of like the beginning of an MCU movie, like yeah, yeah, yeah. PlayStation studios are like far out there. They're, they're powerful now, you know, with, with all of their IPs and their IPs that people love, like not like, like mm. actually love and as, as deservedly so, you know, they, they've done an amazing job with how all of these things have gone. And, you know, with this year, you know, we've got Last of Us coming out in a few weeks and then um, Ghost of Tsushima next month. Mm. Um, we also got Avengers coming out. Got Cyberpunk still to come out. For it. That oh. game was teased ages ago. If there's a if there's ever been like one of the most build ups games, it's been that. Like mm. it just feels like it's just never ending, eh? Mm. Yeah, that Cyberpunk is probably my one of the most anticipated games for me. Like in a lot of Probably of all time, Final Fantasy VII Remake, for obvious reasons, because it's my yeah. favorite game ever. <laughs> uh, like, when that first got announced, like, I just couldn't believe it because they had talked so long about this game being remade. And they were like, no, they're never going to do it. Why would they do that? And then when they announced it at E3, that it was going to be remade. And first for PlayStation, I just couldn't, like, lost it. <laughs> but then when they announced, um, when uh, CD Projekt Red announced Cyberpunk, I remember at the time thinking, ah, like, this is going to be an epic game because they're coming off um, the Witcher 3. Witcher 3 is probably one of my all-time favorite games. Yeah, uh, That's an amazing the open world experience that, of a story of a, an amazing world. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, that was, that was a, that's a crazy journey. And so having played that game and seeing how much work that they put into that gave me the belief that they're going to put in just as much work into cyberpunk yeah and then seeing the reveals over the years like the 40 minute presentations that they, they did i think last year and then the year before like you could t you could just tell right off the bat that this is going to be an epic game yeah and then, deep yeah and then with the the ultimate reveal last year at e3 when when keanu came on oh <laughs> oh, oh silverhand yeah johnny silverhand like when they came on you couldn't have picked a more better person at the time because he was like cultural icon right yeah, now exactly. April. like he had just come off you know john wick three um i think they had announced that they were going to make the matrix four at that time like he was yeah. red hot red yep. hot and yep. they just picked the, the perfect person for the perfect time <laughs> yeah. ah, right. that, that was that was a that was a cool reveal that was a cool yep. reveal. um yeah so the hype for cyber for cyberpunk for me is definitely high um avengers it, that's a game that I'm not really high on, I guess, because we've got so many, Mar we've had so many Marvel movies over the years. Yeah. That, like, for me, the like the hype is still there, but it's just yeah. not as not as much. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll, it'll still be a game I'll check out. Definitely, Ghost of Tsushima. Um, seeing that yeah. I just saw the highlights of that. Was it a week ago or two weeks? Yeah, ago? bro. Yeah. Same. That looks wicked. That, lo that looks unbelievable, and especially we haven't really seen a, a video game samurai. This game, nah. like a, a traditional samurai game, I should say. It's anyway. like Tenchu and all that. Yeah, exactly. PS well, One days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how that um how that turns out, especially mm. coming from uh, oh, who are the developers? Sucker Punch. And their Sucker. last game was um, this what Infamous. Was Infamous, yeah, which yeah. was at the beginning of this generation. Yeah, yes, and they've had they've had all the times because I think that's when Ghost was announced, like when the PS4 in its first or second year. That they were, so it's been, a, it's been a long time that, that they've been working on this. So hopefully, hopefully it uh sticks the landing. We'll see. We'll see when yeah. they come. And then Last of Us Two, of course, like despite being 
ruined, I guess, for a couple of leaks. I'm still looking forward to that game. <laughs> I, I want to know what happens with um, Joel and Ali, and I, I want. I'm so invested in the story. Yeah, bro. Yeah, because like you said, I like it's that's one of the best stories to be told, and and like for me, for like Red Dead Redemption Two, I think that's one of the games that will easily translate into TV. And I'm so stoked that it is going to TV. <sighs> It's like it was like watching a movie, man. Yeah. All of those cutscenes, like, and the thing about it is, it was um, like mesmerizing to watch, and you couldn't take your eyes off to me, bro. Like, I loved Arthur Morgan. He was the coolest dude. Like, I loved that he was rough around the edges. He was a straight up the guts fella, you know. And you you witnessed his um, you know him changing you know and him mm. actually taking steps towards changing and him realizing that he'd been living sort of viewing this gang as you know through rose-colored glasses and all that and bro i'm sure like if people were to just see certain cut scenes from their game they'd go like man yeah this is like a tv series or like a movie or something and like um you know it's easily translatable to to television and movies so yeah i'm glad that's happening as well and that's uncharted as well eh? it's getting made into a movie yes um, tom holland <laughs> tom holland yes and so and mark Wahlberg. Last, last of us is going to hbo i think yes bro yes yeah so yeah it's, it's great to see that these these stories are going to be told in a media medium that's like it's more accessible for people that don't play video games yeah because I, I tell my partner all the time, like, these games are, like, they're more than just video games. Like, yeah. these are amazing stories, amazing characters. And, she like, she's not really into them as much as I am. <laughs> but, like, she, she gets the passion. Like, she gets, yeah. like, she gets where, I, like, where I see these games from. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, it's like, I think for me, just going back on um, Arthur Morgan, like, he has, like, possibly the best character arc I've ever, ever had to face. Yeah, you right. See him as this asshole cowboy but for reasons that he has he's doing it for him, him the gang and dutch yeah but then you see him grow over time when he, and he gradually comes to the realization they're like oh maybe this these aren't the right things that we're doing you know he's, he's yeah in his own like his own morals his own self and because of his actions he's he's the reason for his own downfall yeah bro like him going to get that little bit of money from that dude yeah, yeah. just just going to pick up money and him beating up this person inadvertently is the reason why he well spoiler alert dies <laughs> yeah he gets yeah. tuberculosis <laughs> yeah he's from the, that dude yeah he's the reason that he is his, he's his own downfall and then that's the sort of light bulb moment for him where he's like well i've really got to turn it around and then from there onwards um you see him trying to be a better person and yeah. then, like you said if you were to show a couple of scenes to people that didn't play their game, I think if you showed people the scene that he has after a mission and he meets that um, that nun. The nun by the train station? Yeah, again. Yeah. And he has just this, this brutal heart-to-heart with her. Yeah. And, like He says he's really, scared. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because he's, you know, he, he's human. He, he doesn't, he doesn't want to die. He doesn't, yeah. want, he doesn't want his legacy to be that he's this asshole... Um, cowboy that did all these bad things. He yeah. wants he wants to be remembered as someone that you know tried to do right by the people that he loved and yeah. his family that you know the gang that he loves. And then you you see him lose his family. And yeah, all these moments and that that ending sequence of when you know be- right before he dies, like when you see him lose your, his horse, like oh yeah, that bro. was one of the biggest like heartstrings pulls off for me. <laughs> Yeah, not only because i had got the best horse in the game and i was like you the white one did you get the white yeah. horse yeah bro yeah. same like, same you mofo you just killed off the best horse in the game <laughs> and, Screw um, you. yeah but then to see him have that emotional connection because you don't you have to travel with the horse from like a to b there's no fast like no real fast travel nah other than Probably catching the train but even yeah. then it's pretty annoying exactly so you have to you you build up a bond with this horse and then you see a gun down, you're just like, wow. Okay. And it's got permadeath, so you've never seen your horse die in the game. Exactly. Exactly. It's just like, okay, that's that's cool. And then you see him 
you know, the passing of the mantle to John where he gives him his hat. Yeah. Like, just take care of, he's like, take care of your family, take care of yourself, like, move on. And then you have that final encounter with Micah. And, and then, like, I remember playing the game, I was like, you know, Arthur's going to get out of this, you know, he, always, he gets out of everything. <laughs> sick he is. And then you're playing on and you're battling it, and then you come to that realization, you're like, this is it. He's, he's not coming out of this. He, he's not coming out of this. And then you see him die, you're like, holy hell like what are you doing to me right now <laughs> and just that whole sequence bro like we we're fighting micah they're saying all that stuff he's calling him a rat he's progressively getting sicker like he's yeah. coughing that whole time and ends up on his back trying to get the gun and then dutch the asshole comes out and steps on his hand and then oh. how um how arthur says like oh what is it micah says you lost and he goes no nah. um john like John made it, you know, that was for him. He knew that there was some sort of redemption in him saving John and his family, you know, and letting them live a life away from this gang life. <clears throat> and then how he's like, you know, crawls up and then depending on if you were playing the game good or not, you know, determined if you went up to the top of the mountain and died with the sunrise or sunset whatever sunrise mm. or get shot in the head and like that's when unshaken starts playing in i'm just like oh. <laughs> oh. no that game is oh it gets you in ways that you just don't even see coming right. and i remember yeah i remember in particular my mate um <laughs> He's a laugh. We were talking about it at the same time, and he always plays a bad dude, Nick, no matter what. He's like, I can't, bro. I know. That's the same for me. He's just like, nah, I just love doing it anyway. Like, it's just a laugh. <laughs> but then he said, when Arthur became sick and he realized that, you know, he had to turn it around, he's like, oh, nah, I'm changing the way I play. I'm going to be good from now on. And I couldn't believe it because, like, for, for as long as I've known my mate, he always plays a bad dude, like, no yeah. matter what. And then for him to have that character change for himself, I was like, oh, like, just it was, it was an amazing turn to see. <laughs> and then, but yeah, like you said, the whole, like, redemption arc for Arthur, like, is, is John escaping with, with his family. Yeah. That was, that was unreal. Because in, in Red, oh, you've played Red Dead Redemption 1, correct? Yeah, yeah. So when you play that game, you, Right off the bat, like John Marsden is seen as the good guy, like no matter what, he's, yeah. he's, a, he's a really, really good guy. And then when you go through that's that amazing story, and you see John, like killed in that yeah. way, you kind of feel like you're like that experience has been stolen from you because it's, yeah, you don't get to, you don't get to um, I guess see out John the way you want to see John out, and then and then fast forward to Red Dead Redemption Two. And he comes to the epilogue, and you get to play as John. Yeah, that sort of that sort of feels like a redeeming factor. It in fills it. in those blanks, eh? <laughs> yeah, and it, and it just feels like you get a bit of redemption in on itself because you get to redeem Arthur. You get, you get revenge yeah. on his behalf, and you get to you get to play as as John, and it, it just feels like a sense of like fulfillment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially because you lose him at, at the end of Red Dead One, but yeah. Get their back in and read there too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just what a job by Rockstar. Who would have thought that that those guys that made Grand Theft Auto would make such an amazing story built like game, bro? Like, I remember the hype for that game because that was the that's the first ever midnight release I've ever gone to it was for Red Dead, and I went with two of my close bros, and um, bro, just the hype leading up to the release of that game, like you know, hearing about all the systems that they have in place, you know, the characters, how you could interact with every character in the game, you know, all of that, you know, just deep, deep, deep systems and how the game still looked the way it looked, you know, was still insane. That's the first ever game I've played where I've said, man, this map might be too big. <laughs> mm, mm. Considering you can't fast travel and you're on a horse as opposed to a car. Mm. And I was just like, man, and this just, you know, I cannot believe they packed that much into one game, mm. you know, and it's, it's, inc it's actually incredible, bro. It's like, it's like, a, yeah, it stands above by itself in, in those, in those ways, you know, with the amount of stuff that they put in. And I read there was like uh one point where they had over a thousand people working on the game at one time. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
because they had like six, I think it was six studios or something like that, bro, working all at one time yeah. just to try and get this game done. And when you play it, you can believe that because <laughs> mm. it's just so much. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. No, they definitely put in so much work into this game and it honestly paid off so much. I think just the amount of care that they put in, like you said, to all the different systems, definitely overwhelming for a lot of people because yeah. I remember when I first jumped into it, I was just like, what, I have to keep on eating? Like, even if I don't, my shooting gets affected? My... Yeah, yeah. Had to clean my gun? <laughs> yeah, what? Like, what do I have to do that for? Like, never had to do this before. Clean and... my horse? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, like, even your appearance, like, if you came into a, a town, like, fully bloodied up, or if you, like, had a pudu appearance, the um, the AI would, you know, notice you, and they'd be like, oh, whoa, and then they'd react to you in such a way, it's like, whoa, like, the amount of work to, to, to put into that detail. Right. Unreal. Unreal. It's, yeah, such a good game. Such a good game. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I'm with you on that. And um, everybody listening, um, that's just two games. <laughs> <laughs> and there are heaps of other games that are, you know, amazing in their own right. And we've been talking for ages now, my brother. Um, I think we'll wrap it up there. But this is just the beginning, bro. I'm keen to do this again with yeah, you bro. and just dive into... We'll dive more into Red Dead and like some of the other things on there and probably dive into some Horizon Zero Dawn because that game was amazing. And yeah. I love that they had a powerful female lead character, you know, mm. after all of these years, who wasn't like an over-feminized you know, sexualized version. And she was, you know, she was powerful. She was like Moana. Hey, mm. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blooming, she had her own blooming mana and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, that's a story for another day. So any closing words, my bro? And also wow. tell everybody where they can find you and follow you. <clears throat> oh, so you can find me at Instagram and Facebook, Maldi Boy Gaming. Just, yeah, look that up. You'll see my uh, logo there. It's my moho. <laughs> um, on Twitch, which I haven't really been doing a lot of work on but um i want to get back into that space it's just twitch.tv forward slash ruatai r-u-a-t-a-i that's my name backwards long story behind that because one of my <laughs> mates gave me that nickname one day and it, uh, <laughs> yeah but that's where you can find me yeah but thank you for uh having me on bro i enjoyed the yarns like these are these are the things i like love having like with all my mates in that oh bro me too and pleasure having you on here brother and um yeah i'm I'm keen for this to be a, a regular occurrence and yeah this this section of the podcast um square eyes is you know it's for people like us people who love to just go deep and love to talk about gaming movies and love all the subtle behind the scenes stuff um because this is you know this this makes me excited about this sort of space and this is the space that I've been in since I was a kid and it's, it's cool to be at a space now and a point in my life now where, um, you know, we can blim and podcast about this stuff. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, it's crazy, you know, being a kid and being told to get off the game all the time. Now it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's actually a thing and, um, yeah, it's cool. So, um, yeah, everybody, thank you fellas for listening. If you listened this far, well done. You know, this was a long episode, you know, even went through a bit of a, technical difficulties it took a half an hour before this podcast because it even start because my end was playing up but we are here uh this is episode four of square eyes um my name is the Honu tuna this is creative curiosity and i'll see you for the next one bang brother <laughs> <Sweet>. <laughs>